Um, as you know, there have been various efforts, uh, um, and the Humane Society started a task force to, to try to bring in all the elements, and we have been meeting, and unfortunately we had to cancel our last meeting, and, and so this is not really a task force report, which I would like to have for you, but this is um, the Humane Society's um, proposal. And if you see the thing that's highlighted there, the, the main thing that we see is that only a coordinated effort from everyone can solve our situation in the long term. We've got to have government and the private sector working together towards a common goal. Uh, it, there's no other way to resolve what's going on here, and I, I think probably everybody would agree with that statement. The only difference in that is just people have several ideas about how to get there. And we feel like there's a short-term kind of crisis-oriented situation that we need to deal with, but there's also a long-term situation that we need to resolve, and that is that we need to have a shelter in the county, once again, working with the private sector and the public sector and the government to get everybody involved and to get everybody on the same page. And so what we are proposing in brief for the long term is that we we will, the Humane Society is a 501c3, and, and that's one way that you can get grants is to be a 501c3. We will commit to raising the money. We think it's going to take about $200,000 to build a really fine, good shelter that we can all be proud of, that we can all work for and work with. And um, we will raise that money, and we're not asking the county at this point. We think we can raise that money from the private sector. We think we can build the shelter, get grants. There are grants out there, and Aaron can speak to that a little bit. There are grants out there that are available, and we want to build a building that will meet the standards of these grantors. So we think it's important to do that. We think it will take about a year to build this shelter in a centrally located place that <coughs> would then be owned, but we would assume that it would then be, we would turn it over to the county, and the county would own it. That's not set in stone. That's just what we're thinking. Um, and once again, we also would request that we have a committee of the Humane Society, since we would go for the grants, that, and then you guys would be on that committee, at least someone from the commission, the sheriff, um, public officials, and private, Sandy, people, whoever the humane officer is, whoever the animal control officer is, but it's not Sandy, whoever the key people are, would also be on that planning committee, and that we would, the Humane Society would commit to raising that money and not ask the county for that money. Where the county money comes in is in the operation, in our view. Then the county would come up with animal control budget for an animal control officer, a humane officer, if it's two different people, and someone to be in charge of the shelter, because if you're in charge of the shelter, that's, you've got to help coordinate the volunteers, et cetera, et cetera. You've got to have an adoption program. You've got to have a spay and neuter. It's a big big picture. The good news is that everybody's paying attention. If everybody can just pay attention and focus and work together and get the money, we can do this and we can continue to run this and the Humane Society is very committed to helping. Now Erin has been working on guidelines for shelters and what grants are available. We also have some other people working on what grants are available and we're real confident that we can pull off the building, the shelter part, but we have to have a commitment from the county for the, the operations and to, to look at the overall budget for animal control and say, you know, we have to get this under control. So that is our proposal and in the short term, um, we have a, a brief proposal in the short term and I'm sure you'll hear more in the short term, but we, you know, we'll try to help any way we can in the short term, but we feel like we really want to focus on the long term. Okay. And here's some, Erin uh, has some policies and guidelines for shelter. You know, a lot of people will say, oh my God, that's a lot of money. Well, it, it is a lot of money, but we think we can get grants to do it. I know you're interested in this, Sheriff, so but you have a copy of that too. And we have other ones for, if the press wants some. Okay, so. Okay, uh, first I'd like to ask you, we have this short-term immediate problem. Do you, do you really feel that the uh, Humane
Humane Society is able to, to deal with that in, in, a, in, a, in a way that's kind of solid. The short term? Yeah. Well, I don't think we're proposing that we can jump in and do uh, save the day in the short term. It's it, especially in the matter of the dogs. When we've got about 15 cats. Uh, I've got a German Shepherd that's attached to me at the hip that I'm fostering. I mean, it, and we don't have fault. We stopped having very many fosters before because of insurance. Because like I had a dog once that killed some sheep, and you know, what I mean? it got loose. You know, it, 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 the fostering in people's homes just doesn't work very well. There's so too you, many. So you don't have a short-term solution. Though. We're just going to support whatever short-term uh, proposal comes up that we feel like we can support. Basically, more kennels, more staffing, somewhere. Okay. That's our. Okay. That's at the bottom of the page I for us. I see that, but, but we when don't. When you say we propose adding a dog kennel, I thought that was your solution. No, it's we. Not your solution. No, we. You know, in our building down there where it is in the floodplain. In the middle of town, we're a little bit concerned about the dog thing. That's why we're only doing cats so far, because we just don't want to put dogs down there and have them be barking and create a nuisance, and it's it not a good location. Hmm. Right. It in yeah. harm's way. Now, Ms. Mallow, let's hear from you. Um, I have a short proposal just to... Okay. All right. You can Thank look you. over it and see... Tell what us what think. it is. It's basically... Um, right now, I'm housing about 20 dogs at a time. Um, I have room for a few more kennels that can be put up. Um, I found some kennels um, that are portable, that can be moved, um, have roofs on them, have uh, fight guard protectors, you know, so they dogs can't fight with each other between. Your chain link kennels just are not kennels that you can, these ones you go out here and buy at Southern States and Farm and Fleet. Uh, I do repairs daily. Um, even puppies can get the wire pulled off. These are actually sturdy kennels that are in the back, um, and the pricing are on there. Um, as far as like a quarantine cage, um, I've got an estimate of about $500 to build one. That's a cement floor. That is the grading that I need that's heavy gauge plus the roof to build a quarantine uh, kennel to house like a dog bite, you know, that has to be quarantined for 10 days. Um, because right now I do not have that. A chain link kennel will not hold in a dog that has to be quarantined. And I also have, so that you can see, and everybody can see, ah, uh, it just all fell off. <laughs> <laughs> it just take me a minute, my sticky's come loose. 